Hi, welcome to the Painting with Commentary edition of the Minotaur Labyrinth Guardian from episode 31 of Paint to Life. Uh, this is the Pathfinder Battles Deep Cuts model, and we're going to go through what I did for King Kilgore in this episode. So right away, I put him on his disc and I decided I wanted to make a labyrinth around his feet that was representational of the Minotaur in the Labyrinth. So I traced out a rough rudimentary pattern and made sure that he would fit. And then I got to work. I used some XPS foam, and I don't have a foam cutter, so you just use a metal ruler and um, hold it tight while you run your foam cutter along and make nice straight thin lines with a styro cutter. Approximately, I don't know, whatever that size is. I didn't really measure it, I just kind of went from my roughed out line, you can see. And I put both of them, I cut them both the same size. Those are going to be the walls of my labyrinth. Um, and um, I had never done anything like this. I thought it would be fun to try, and I was very happy with the result. So, of course, I penciled in a rough labyrinth, and now I'm going to use my styro cutter to make the walls. Now, I'm not going to make a bunch of little teeny pieces. I'm going to make big, long vertical pieces, or in this orientation here, horizontal. And I'm going to affix them on there. Now, I used white glue at first. That was a mistake. I don't like using super glue, on, super glue on XPS foam because it melts the foam. It's not so much it melts it, it I guess it does melt it. Um, but if you're quick and use a little bit, it will work. And the problem with the white glue is it took forever to dry. And even then when it was dry, it broke off easily. So even though in this video I'm using white glue, as you can see I've affixed all these pieces. And now I'm cutting little pieces to put... Um, I ultimately broke it all off and just used super glue. So there you go, pro tip, use super glue. So after I put those three, six vertical or five vertical pieces, the big long ones, now I'm just cutting tiny little pieces to fit and wedge in between. You know, um, it's a pretty straightforward process. Ultimately, you're just trying to make every one of the hallways appear the same diameter from one another. Making close note that you know the minotaur has to stand in the middle so make sure you leave enough room for his big feet once it's dry i use my cutter to cut out the pieces uh, in the vertical so i put those vertical slats now i'm going to cut out the uh, the hallways now you don't have to go all the way to the bottom you can just cut the majority out and see you can use i'm using the end of a paintbrush and a mold line remover to push out the rest it's just glued on with super glue it's not a problem. Again, use that styro cutter to cut all those pieces and then my little thing to knock all of them loose. And again, when I first used the white glue, it was coming off like um, a piece of plastic and breaking the, the pieces off, but super glue didn't do that. So don't worry about going over the edge. There's your rudimentary maze. Oh, that'll need to be glued on, I figure. So that's what it looked like when it was done. All those pieces that are going off the edge, we're going to trim them off later. Okay, so now let's see what we have here. Here's me going around the circle, keeping my hot wire cutter flush with the disc and just slicing through any of the overhanging pieces of the maze. And I have all this little scrap. If you need to fill, I mean, see there I am with my super glue. So if you've made a, a rough cut and there's a bit of an angle, that's where you can use those little pieces. Um, the little teeny wedges, just fill them in. Don't worry if it doesn't look perfect. Don't worry if it has lots of cracks. We're gonna fill all those coming up here. So now we're using some gray craft glue, and I can say gray craft glue because you can get this from Walmart or Michaels like a craft store. This is just a big old tube of gray paint. Did I say glue? I apologize. It's craft paint, not glue. Um, as you can see here, I'm just slopping it on the bottom and the walls. It's almost like a priming layer. I apologize for being out of the, the camera in this shot, but it's really not much to see. What you're doing here is you're priming the XPS foam for a paint job. And understand you can't spray paint XPS foam because the accelerant will cause it to eat away the foam. The foam dissolves. And while we watch me paint this gray, I want to just comment too. Um, someone mentioned to me on the weekend um, that you know you can't cut XPS foam with a hot wire cutter unless it's well ventilated. Well, I've never read that. I read, looked, up, looked it up. I was worried it was toxic. It's not. I, apparently, it's just water vapor escaping from inside the foam matrix so as it melts it just collapses down and it's just moisture it's not toxic so i'm told uh, so i've learned or read but you know better safe than sorry i do have a well ventilated area that i work in it's in the basement of my house with a window so 
just be be careful when cutting XPS foam. Uh, and if you find out that if I'm completely wrong and you definitely need to be ventilated, let me know in the comments below. But like I said, I've looked it up just on the MSDS even of the XPS foam before you know poisoning myself working on this hobby. <laughs> so that's that side note. So as you can see, I've pretty much finished up priming this thing, all the walls, all the flooring, and I've got a nice still shot here of the finished prime gray. Still see, has some lines, uh, some seams, if you will. That's okay, we're gonna fill those. So the next step in this project with this labyrinth is to strengthen it. So this is liquid green stuff from Citadel. I use it to fill cracks in models. And in this case, I'm gonna use it to fill cracks in my walls. And there's something else that it does. It dries almost like a shell, a candied shell. So I'm gonna put this all over on the seams and apply it with some water and a paintbrush. The liquid green stuff goes on thick, but you can also add water to it and use a junk brush to just spread it around. And what that's gonna do is it hardens. And it really made, because right now those XPS walls, remember, they are super glued to the base, which is plastic, but some of those pieces are really small, and if you were to rest your hand on one accidentally, it would be like a loose tooth. It'll just pop right out. By using this liquid green stuff, hitting all over on these edges, on the base, it really hardened up. And when I was finished, um, you can see here's my paintbrush. I added some water to it to spread it around. It really seized it up, and now it's it's quite solid. The finished model was uh, was quite a solid uh, was a, quite a solid piece. Um, Again, there's another minute of this, but here's the thing. I'm wondering what you guys think of this little labyrinth idea. I mean, I had a bunch of people say that's either a really small labyrinth or a really big minotaur. And it's true. My eight-year-old also said that. Again, I was going for a symbolic look of the minotaur in the maze. And, you know, by painting little torches on the wall. I think it goes without saying, but, you know, it's definitely a design choice that was artistic. And you don't you normally get lots of those when it comes to bases. It's a miniature on a miniature. So, curious if you if you think it's your jam or if you think it looks kind of stupid, but obviously with Paint to Life, when you're putting out an episode a week, you kind of commit and then you just run it all the way to the edge. So, as you see, the green stuff is almost finished being applied. Let that dry for about two hours, and that's what it looks like. All those green areas are super rigid now and super strong. Definitely something I recommend. And see all of my gaps were filled in too, so now it looks like a continual wall instead of having those cracks. So the next step here is to apply some stony pathway. So I'm gonna use some glue. I use a garbage junk, my glue brush to just spread it all over. I'm gonna just make it like water in this path. And then I'm gonna use some Army Painter Battlefield Battleground, that little picture there brown, but I have black Battleground. See, I'm just pushing the glue to the sides now. I'm pushing hard on my paintbrush to like swipe it away so that it pushes the glue to the edges. What I want is to put this gravel in here to look like um, like roughage, but I don't want it to be like an asphalt. So I put it in there, and because I've pushed the glue to the side, most of it is building up on the edge. And now that that's dry, you can see, you can still see a flat walkway, but you can also see where the gravel is pushed along the sides to look like rubble. So now I'm using a contrast paint, Saigor Brown. This is a really deep brown color, um, a, little less br a little less dark than the Wildwood contrast paint, but it has its uses. And in this case, the dungeon wall, I was gonna go for um, a brown dungeon instead of gray stone. One other fun fact there, you can see a divot near the center of the model. It's right there in the center. It's a little gouge in the wall. That's actually for the Minotaur's calf muscle. So I didn't get a good shot of this, but when I was fitting the Minotaur in there, you know, his gait, like how wide his legs were open, was a little too tight when, from what I had anticipated when I drew out my maze. So it actually butted into my wall, which could have been a problem because the wall was high, right? Like that wall is however high that is, I guess half, uh, what's that, about a quarter of an inch or half an inch, uh, whatever the width of the XPS foam is. So I needed to use an attachment of my wire cutter it's a wand it heats up really hot if you like using xps phone you have to get a wire cutter with the with the wire string but also it comes with some wand attachments it's great the thing is mega hot and you just gently and i repeat gently i didn't want to burn through the wall i just licked lick 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 just licked the wall and it just melted right away into a crease i did that enough times until i had uh 
room for his calf and there it is so some naz drag yellow this is a contrast paint as well this is like a shit this is like a bad party di diarrhea shit <laughs> brown yellow i said yeah that's the color i want my dungeon floor so i put that all over not on the walls but if it splashes on the walls a little that's i right. for the most part i just wanted it to go on top of that black rubble and the area that was primed with the gray craft paint so now it looks like a really nasty brown when it dries okay so next up we're going to use some dry brushing some riza rust on that Cygore brown because this is lit by torches and i have a couple areas where you can actually see the torches i painted them on the walls but you can see here by dry brushing these walls the the wire has a little bit of a shake in it while you're using the hot wire brush and also this dry brushing just picks up all that texture uh, I didn't texturize my walls like people will use aluminum foil to scratch them up. It, it's too small. Plus, be, I guess I would have had to texturize them all in a shake box like um, Jeremy at Black Magic Craft. You, know, you put all your little pieces in a box, shake them up with some rocks or aluminum foil. It gouges them all. But it's so tiny. I didn't, and you can't even see it very well. So I didn't bother. What I did instead was just dry brush that green stuff, and the green stuff already gave it a bit of a texture. So why did I use Riser Rust? Because again, it's lit by torches in, in certain areas where I had planned to put torches. That's one of them I'm painting right now. I, I heavily condensed, I put a lot of the, and there's another one. I put a lot of the Riser Rust there because I really wanted it to glow orange and a little yellow as well when I paint the torch on. There they go. So that's the point of the dry brushing there. Now I take, uh, that's a, just a little metallic color. I didn't put a, ta a it's just a lead belcher or something, just for a torch sconce. Just a vertical line, just to look like a sconce on the wall. Okay, and there's a little bit of a, a yellow dry brush, just very light yellow. Okay, now I'm putting some Nurgle's Rot. I never use this. I have had it because it's one of those cool technical paints. I'm just making some slime, some sewage in this dungeon. So I chose two corners. I didn't want to put it everywhere. And I painted up the walls to make it look like, I don't know if there's a burst sewage valve or it's just slime. And just go with it. The trick I think is diversity. See, here comes out the, the blood. Everyone likes blood, right? So I tried to make like a Freddy Krueger blood trail, like someone had been dragging a corpse through the maze. But again, if you put blood on every corridor, it gets overkill. So this is blood for the blood god, Citadel Technical Paint. So you don't want to overkill it. So just pick an area. Now here's my little Flash Gets Yellow Torch. See those little teeny licks of flame on top of that riser rust? Click, click, click. And now you have this little torch on the wall, which explains the glow. Very cool. And for the rest of it, get some little um, moss, get some tufts, get all kinds of little teeny sticks from your garden, tiny, tiny ones though, and glue them in there, and you're done. And this is my finished labyrinth. So there's a slime, you can see all the grit on the ground, you can see I put some gloss on top of that yellow to look like it was a wet floor, sewagey. Here's another angle, see the tuft there, and that little stick from my garden, those torches look sick, IMO. And uh, you can see right down the aisle. I put some stones in them too. They're out there. There's the, there they are. There's one there. See the stones? I glued some stones in place to look like big boulders that would be blocking the labyrinth. So there you go. There's the finished labyrinth base. So now we take Big Chet here. His sword doesn't come off, but his cape does. Very important. And so does his base. And why is that important? Well, you don't want to try and paint that guy with that big cape on. So take him apart. So this paint job now, uh, Lead Belcher. I probably went light, then dark, then rustic. I could have skipped probably this lead belcher stage completely. And that will happen. You don't necessarily know what you have until you have it. And I started with lead belcher because it's like my favorite neutral metallic paint. I, you know, some of you guys probably do non-metallic metal and do a great job. I just don't have the time or the ability. Lead belcher is a really cool metallic gray. It's not too nightly and, and blue like um, Grey Knight Steel, and it's not too gunmetal dark like Iron Warriors. It's just a nice plate mail looking color. And when I first did this, remember I'm painting this story and my whole jam is Paint the Life. Is I'm, I'm making the story as I go. And I'm like, okay, so who is this guy? What is that labyrinth? The labyrinth took up so, it took half this video as that labyrinth. So I knew that the labyrinth was gonna figure heavy in the story. But what about the Minotaur? What's his deal? And started that's why i started with this gray this gray because it, it's very nightly it looks very like a sheet sh sh uh, suit of plate mail but then the more i realized i was like wait a minute but if this minotaur is living in there all the time his his armor is not going to be pristine is it 
it's going to be dirty and maybe rusty and have holes or or filth so even though i started with this lead belcher coat as a nice prime i'm gonna come back to it and ruin it later so you could save yourself some paint and some money i do a sword blade and when you really think about it this mini is pretty basic um because he's wearing full plate he has that cool cape and this loin cloth and i suppose his calf muscles are exposed behind his greaves there and you could paint him like a cow like a cow colors but he is skeletal this is why i was confused if you look at his face he has a bone like face so why does he have calf muscles that i'm painting right there right it's not part of the armor so i just said hell with it i'll just make it part of the armor because again when he's set in the maze, most of his haunches are going to be hidden by the walls in the maze anyways, including his hooves, so not much time was given to that. But I did thin that paint. That lead belcher was th thin with um, a, a medium, a, la a lamian medium from Citadel, because uh, you can use water as well. I just use lamian medium when I'm going to do a big area like this, because I really wanted it to go on nice and smooth and clean, and I'd put multiple layers on if I needed more. So when he was done, he was a shiny boy, and I was happy. Now I'm trying his sword. Now that is a fiery sword. An atheromatic blue is a beautiful contrast paint. It's a very turquoise looking look to it. Now when you look at the source material for Miniature Labyrinth Guardian from Pazio from Pathfinder, it's a flaming sword. But I'm sick of burning things, right? I wanted to do like a soul blade. So I started with this contrast blue, and it dries almost translucent. Um, and then I built up on it two more contrast blues with this one being the most top, the top most. So there it is dry while well, it's drying further. I'm going to use black again. I rarely just do a black skirt and cape. It's pretty one dimensional and, um, I get that. But again, he was starting to come in my mind now. I was starting to think this is an undead. He's a guardian. He was chosen by the labyrinth. So having the black cape and the black loincloth is almost like shadow wraithy, and I really liked it. Um, and that's when I also degraded his armor, as we'll get to the last step in this video. So right now I'm just putting this black paint on all these places, being careful not to hit my lead belcher. And you can see, now it doesn't look so great. That lead belcher looks like a silver knight, yet I'm putting this black cloth on him and a black cape, and that's not looking very good so i knew i was going to have to do something with his armor and that's going to come up later as well but again look at his face he's got a skeletal face with his own horns and these big armor horns so he's a, he's definitely undead so i'm taking some of that black and painting it under his neck to even though he has neck muscle the model itself has neck muscle but he also has a skeletal face so i painted his neck black with a couple vertebrae bones to symbolize that he has got like a, a hole in his neck where it's just bones so so here's the black on the cape and you know it's funny you think well that's super easy to paint and it is but boy it's you really gotta go thin your paint and go many times because when it dries it, it shrinks a little and suddenly one area got a nanometer of paint less than another and it's got like a gray streak where the primer from these uh whiz kids minis is showing through so you really i think i painted that cloak about four times so now my next layer of this paint talisar blue again i'm not going all the way up i'm just going to keep it bluey um just a little on the edge so that other blue is still on top and lighter near the top and here comes the iron warriors this is like a repaint of what i already painted but because i've already underpainted it with lead belcher i can go really thin and i can put it on very quickly but I'm darkening him up. See, as it goes on there, he takes a more menacing look. The armor looks more um, evil now. Instead of that bright knightly look, it's gotten darker. And if I had just started with this color, I would have saved myself a step. But say, lovey, you only know when you know. So Iron Warriors it is. He's now, I don't know, 20% 20, 20 darker than he was. And I'm going to use my lead belcher to highlight the iron warriors to give some edging effects to it. And then I'll hit it at the end. So now ultramarines blue. I don't like this contrast paint at all, but I'm putting it on the blade itself, not on the fiery part, just on the blade. Now hit that iron warriors with some null oil. It was already dark. Let's make it even more dark. Null oil, as you guys know, magic in a jar. That's going to go on top of that Iron Warriors and just darken it up even further. Pallid Witch Flesh, that's the color I use for bone. 
Um, I put it on there. It's like an off-white, but it's a more gray off-white than a bone off-white. And then I use skeleton bone a contrast paint on top of it to give the bony colors a little bit more to look like a brown bone as opposed to a ghost white bone. So again, null oil, use, um, use conservatively, just make sure it doesn't pool too much in the wrong spots. And sometimes I spin them around, I hang them upside down to dry just so that it doesn't pool in weird crevices and then I spin them and spin them and spin them and just use a dry brush to soak up the excess if you have any. Oh yeah, so he has a chain shirt, a Sigmarite dry brushing on that chain shirt underneath just to make it kind of look bronze. I kind of brand bronze paint but that gold Sigmarite, you know whatever. Uh, Necron compound, okay so this is just a dry brush of Necron compound. My Necron compound is very crumbly. I just did it on all the raised areas though. The skulls on his weapon, the skulls on his shoulder pads, on his knee pads, on his shoulder, um, greaves and stuff. Uh, just there though. I, I wanted to keep the Null and Oil and Iron Warriors, the dark part of it, the important part. And that's what I did. Okay, so those horns, the ornate horns are there. That's very cool. Now what do we have here? This is some of that uh, technical sapphire blue gem paint. I'm just spreading it around his eye sockets and up his helmet because his eyes are going to be green, uh, blue. So now typhus corrosion. This is the last step of the paint. I'm going to paint on top of all my armor in various areas to make it look corroded and rusty. And then I'm going to do a lead belcher edging effect around each piece of the metal. The final thing I didn't capture was I just used a really light blue and two pinpoints for eyes on top of that sapphire. So again, this typhus corrosion, thin it or put a little bit on your brush at a time when you do it and brush it all over. It dries into almost like a crusted mud effect. Look at how dirty he looks now. Now he looks like a minotaur undead that's been there for, for a long time, just hanging out. So that's it for this minotaur. Now let's glue him into the base and take a look at the finished product. Bam. There he is. So you can see that slime effect. Could have probably cleaned it off the wall a little bit, but that's okay. It just looks like it slimed up the wall. There's a tuft, the little torch, and the OSL lighting around the torch. Uh, I also did those little edge blue dabs on all the skulls in his armor. You can see that all their eyes are lit blue. Um, you can see his finished sword. I did the, the different blues, and then I did a quick light brushing of Iron Warriors on the blade itself, so it looked like the fire was inside the blade. And the cloak looks nice. I did a dab of bronze on his ring. And you can see again from this angle, see the little um, tree that's in there, as well as tufts and rocks and stones and sticks from my garden. Very fun base to do. And the final shot here, there he is, glowing eyes and all. So that is King Kilgore from the Mysterium. I hope you liked episode 31 of Paint the Life. I hope this helped. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, leave comments below, and I am GMA Tank, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.